Companies rush to fire developers and replace them with AI to save money, but here's the plot twist that none of them saw coming. They're now spending fortune hiring people back to clean up the mess that AI created. So Sarah Skid just made $2,000 fixing copy that would have cost $200 if a human had written it from the start. Sophie Warner is char charging investigation fees just to figure out what went wrong when clients tried ChatGPT first. So are we witnessing the birth of a new job category, AI janitors? And here's the question that should terrify every executive who jumped onto the AI bandwagon. How much does it really cost you to fix what you thought you would save with money? Now, before everybody starts blasting me and says I hate AI, listen up, because I don't hate AI, I'm an AI realist. Let's talk about this today, because I'm gonna give you the real scoop. <laughs> Welcome to Startup Pack, I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so everyone was debating whether AI would replace developers, something completely different happened. Companies are discovering that AI doesn't eliminate the need for skilled developers. It creates an entirely new category of work, cleaning up AI's mistakes. So the most valuable developers in 2025 aren't the ones generating the AI code, they're the ones who can think their way out of the problems that AI might have created. Now, according to some recent reports, there's a, now a thriving cottage industry of developers and writers who specialize in fixing AI mistakes and charging premium rates for it. So I'm gonna go through some articles here that talk about some of these, but one client went without a website for three days and paid almost $5,000 to get a simple line of code fix that ChatGPT screwed up and nobody in the company could figure it out because they let go of all their developers. So companies that thought they were saving money with AI are discovering that the cleanup costs exceeds what they would have paid for if they'd kept the human in the loop. Again, not saying that AI is bad, but just saying that if you think AI is gonna replace everything, we can think again. So the irony is perfect. The people who were supposed to be replaced by AI are now making more money than ever fixing AI screw ups. So there's a critical thinking that's become a new superpower. CTOs across the industry report that they now prioritize critical thinking and healthy skepticism over raw coding skills when hiring developers. Now, this is something that engineers have been talking about for a long time. Engineering leaders are changing their interview process to include AI generated code with intentional errors or ambiguous uh, ambigu ambiguities apparently that's where it's hard to say, to test whether candidates ask the clarifying questions. So get that. They're saying AI generated this code. What are you going to do with it? So the behavioral interview now focuses on checking resistance to false confidence and the ability to evaluate code in terms of risk, not just functionality. So now in my in my time of development, I've never seen such a dramatic shift where the back and forth with the pendulum has swung so quickly. Let's jump into some of these articles here because I want to go through some of these. So this is... Um, Sarah Skid that I talked about at the beginning, she said, I'm being paid to fix AI, uh, issues caused by AI. Now, this is by the BBC, right? And she said in May, uh, she was approved, approached by a content agency to urgently rework website copy that had been produced via generated AI for hospita hosp hospitality clients. She's like, maybe I'm being naive, but I think if you're very good, you won't have trouble. Now, this is part of it, right? So she goes on and talks about this, but it says more than a third, 35% of small businesses plan to expand AI use within two years, rising to 60% among those aiming for rapid sales growth. Now, however, some businesses are rushing in and Ms. Skid shows it can often create more work and costs than originally intended. Again, this isn't saying that AI is bad. Before you guys all start yelling, throw things at me. So before clients would message us if they were having issues with their site or wanted to uh, improve, introduce new functionality, now they're going to chat GPT first. And again, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think everybody needs to be able to use it. It's a great tool and people should be using it. Let's jump into this one here. I thought this article was interesting. Companies that tried to save money with the AI are now spending a fortune hiring people to fix it. So companies that rushed to replace human labor with AI are now shelling out to get human workers to fix technology screw ups. And this reports to another BBC report. Uh, it's a similar one, right? But these guys talk about when marketing uh, got down to business, they realized that they require a comp complete overhaul. Ultimately, she spent 20 hours redoing the copy. Now, there was other parts that it was talking about in here. Um, but let's talk into this one. So CTOs reveal how AI changed software development hiring in 2025. And I really like this one, right? They asked 12 CTOs and CEOs what skills now prioritize when hiring developers of, because of AI. Their answers validate what experienced developers suspected all along. This is one of my favorite statements here because what I hear all the time is I hear people who tell me that I don't understand. And the reality of the matter is then it's usually backed up by a hundred other commenters who tell me that I understand exactly. So those who have been in tech for a long time really do understand. 
So I like this joke here. What coding language are you using 2025? React, Next, Vibe Coding. And they throw that dude out the window. Now, again, I'm not hating on Vibe Coding. Vibe Coding's got its place. Non-technical people can jump into Vibe Coding as long as you're not saying it's going to replace the software developer. So uh, let's talk about the first one. AI often give cons- confident but wrong answers, right? This is one of the biggest problems, is unless you're technical enough to be able to spot the wrong answers, you'll accept everything as truth, and that's one of the biggest problems with it, right? Next one, the best candidate treats AI like a junior teammate. Now that's true, and you can give it off, you know, little things to run off and do to the side, but again, that means that you've gotta have a very senior, experienced person to one, know how to set up with this correctly, and two, how to then go back to those, you know, confidently wrong answers. Three, the moment of scrutiny saved us from a patient safety issue. So I I think this was a really interesting one. We recently interviewed a developer for a healthcare app, uh, app project during a test, We handed over AI-generated code that looked clean on the surface. Most candidates moved on. However, this particular candidate paused and flagged a subtle issue. The way that AI handled HL7 timestamps could delay remote patient vital uh, syncing. This mistake might have gone live and risk clinical alerts. Man, (laughs) that sounds really risky. So at any rate, if you're hiring in any field touched by AI, test how candidates respond when the machine is wrong. That's where the real talent shows up. See, guys, I'm not the only one saying this. Everybody's throwing stuff at me for saying I'm hating on AI. I'm not hating on AI. I think it's a great tool. But you wouldn't hand a hammer, a bunch of board and nails, and be like, go build the house. Still need architects. All right, we need developers who can spot when AI gets it wrong, right? This is going back over the the same uh, thing we just talked about. Developer coding, two hours. ChatGPT generates code in five minutes. Developer debugging, six hours. Developer debugging this one, 24 hours, right? All right, AI can write code, but it can't think about how systems scale. This is a really big important one because I actually see a lot of AI generated code that will never scale in production. And I see that pretty frequently. Um, And so, you know, AI writes, you know, the AI can actually write a decent set of a function, but it won't know how that function uh, is called and if that function is getting called inside of a loop per se. Uh, number six, we've seen perfect code break under real world real world pressure. Apparently, that's hard to say. AI tools like GitHub Copilot and ChatGPT have boosted developer productivity by up to 55%, but the shift have moved the real value away from just writing code. Developers now spend more time debugging, integrating, and making architectural decisions. Surprise, it's actually always been that way. So they took, you know, the AI is taking the easy part about writing code, right? Autocomplete has been getting better and better inside of tools like Visual Studio and VS Code for a lot of years. And now with AI, it's really good. The autocomplete's fantastic, I love it. Uh, AI handles basic code generation, developers create structure. That's totally true, and I, and I really believe that. How has AI changed your hiring process? We focus on judgment, context, and tool fluency. Developers who understand how to integrate AI into their workflow move faster with precision. So I like this because those who know systems can actually set up AI agents and things to work really well and to know how to use them safely. Those that don't, don't. And that's going to be the video I'm going to create tomorrow, which is going to highlight some of the security vulnerabilities we're seeing come out. Next, understand the business behind the code. I think the majority of the stuff that I get when people reach out to us at Startup Pack and some of the best compliments that I get is that start here at Startup Pack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies. And when we do that, we do it with a com- combination of understanding technology and business acumen. Those two together are actually what seem to, seem to be our client's most uh, valuable compliment that I get from our clients. Now, they said, we used to hire people who could code. Now we hire people who can think. I love that one because this goes through and shows that it's not just about being a monkey and writing some really cool algorithm. Generally, the really cool algorithms are actually crap because usually if they break, nobody knows how to fix them. So usually the simpler code is better. So now we know how to hire people who can think. And I really like that one, right? So AI can help with implementations, but only humans understand business needs. And this is totally true. You know, I've heard the joke that says, as soon as we can have perfect requirements written, we'll, AI will be able to implement the system. But we've never had perfect. You know what they call perfect requirements? Code. It's called code. All right. Engineers who integrate business insight into technical decisions thrive, right? And this is what I think is really the biggest difference. If you can take a business, uh, you take the business uh, secret sauce and you build it into technology, that is where you see technology thrive, right? So I think that's really the big one. Now, debugging in AI is the new interview test. We're hiring AI editors, interpreters, and sense makers. 
so far, one of the things that I see over and over again is I see all these benchmarks around AI that can generate code. I want a benchmark that can show how AI can debug code because that's what really no developer wants to do. Every developer likes to write new greenfield code. Nobody likes to debug code. So give me the AI that's gonna debug my code. Man, I'll pay some good money for that one, as will every developer. All right, she spent 15 minutes asking smart questions before writing any code. I love this because I actually like developers and I train developers to actually write in pseudocode long before they've written any of the first lines of code. If you write in the pseudocode, you're gonna actually prove out the thought process long before you dive into actually writing code. Writing code should be one of the last things you do. So I, I really think that ultimately at the end of the day, this is what we're starting to see. We're starting to see smart people who are really going at, um, at software development as engineering, as it should have been from the beginning. So if AI is coming in and helping with that, great. More power to organizations to make this Iron Man suit, to make their developers uh, Tony Stark so that they can be Iron Man, right? Not replacing them with robots, but becoming Iron Man, right? So before companies can successfully implement AI solutions, they need robust infrastructure architecture, the foundational layer of technical systems, hardware, and networks. So let me say this a little different. If you're going to go implement AI and your data is a mess, AI is going to be a total disaster because the AI will only be as good as your data. So I know very few companies that have such squeaky clean uh, data systems that they can just slap AI and it just runs off and does all these perfect, amazing things. AI requires massive data storage systems to scale. And if, they, your, if your data cannot scale and it's not clean, you have no chance of having AI do you any good. So AI requires massive data storage system that can scale, compute power for processing, network infrastructure and security architecture, cloud capabilities, and robust security measures. Companies who rush into AI without proper infrastructure architecture are discovering that their implementations fail due to insufficient infrastructure, poor data flow, or security vulnerabilities, not because the AI is bad. The most valuable developers understand this IA before AI progression and can architect systems that support AI workloads rather than just generate a bunch of AI slop code. So my experience shows that trying to implement AI without proper infrastructure is like building a skyscraper without a foundation. It might look really impressive initially, but inevitably the wind's going to knock it over, right? Developers who understand both the infrastructure requirements and the limitations of AI are becoming the bridge between AI hype and real world implementation success. And right now, IBM is reporting that less than 20% of AI projects are actually making it to production. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems to help your company work to maximum efficiency. Now, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great conversation. So hit me up. Uh, check out startuppack.com slash Spencer if we can help your company implement some, uh, some great software into your systems. And here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've trans Transform technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology, leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com Spencer.